I got to say, like I said, it was a tough week. I was sick for three of the days this week, and so I really wasn't able to eat or keep anything down too much, so I didn't really eat much. And then one day when I was starting to feel better, I said, you know what, I need to go and get myself a steak. <laughs> so I went to T-Bones to get their steak because they only have it on like Friday nights. And I said, I'm going to get me a steak. And I went to get a steak and I went, got in there and I asked the guy, do you have the prime rib today? Because I knew it was their special day. And the guy said, yeah, we have it. And I said, you sure? Because the last two times, you told me you had it, and then I ordered it, and you told me, sorry, we don't have any left. And he said, I promise you, sir, we have steak left. And so I went, and I sat down, and I, was, I ordered my steak, and lo and behold, they actually had it. So God is good. <laughs> and all the time, no steak is good. No, no, no. And so I was eating my steak, and I was enjoying it. I had a big smile on my face. And then the guy came back and sat down right next to me and he says, I want you to let you know this is what we call a random act of kindness. He said, I am going to pay for your entire meal. Everything is on me. Get yourself a, get a dessert, get yourself drinks, whatever you want, it's on me. This is an act of kindness. He said, all I ask in return is that when you're in a shopping mall or in, at the grocery store, if you see somebody else, that seems to have a need that you do something to be a blessing unto them. And then he gave me a card that is a $25 discount to give to the person as well to T-Bones. And so I said, I promise you, sir, within this week, I will make sure that I go and I am a blessing to somebody else. But it just goes to show you that God still is moving and blessing. And there are still some people out there that have integrity. Amen. And it just touched my heart when I heard that because so many times you hear about corporations and businesses and all they want to do is make an extra buck and they want to charge people more and take advantage. So when you see people that have morality, that have a good heart and want to do something nice for their neighbor, it makes you feel good. And so I ended my week on a positive. So I was really excited about that. And I prayed and I was like, wow, thank you for this so much. And so I was really, really excited about that. And um, yesterday, I want to mention a little plug for the men. We, are have, we had our men's group yesterday. was trying to figure out a way that we could kind of connect with our young people. So we want to announce that in one of the Saturdays in April, we are going to have our old school versus new school Olympics. <laughs> we, the older, are going to challenge the younger to a bevy of athletic and mental events. She said, do you have insurance? Oh, ye of little faith. Why don't you ask if they have insurance? We are going to, <laughs> so we are going to, us men are going to challenge our young people to, to a bevy of events and to those that want to come out and watch, we'll let you know when it's coming. If those, we will have um, uh, our prayer warriors fasting and praying as we get ready to, for the event for our safety and our well-being. <laughs> so that being said, we will hope that the men can come out and enjoy us. We want to just have a good time and connect to our young men. Um, so I want to just talk to you today about a word that God has given me today. And the title of the sermon that God has given me for today is entitled, Moving On Up. Moving On Up. And so I got to ask the question, obviously, how many of you guys remember that show, The Jeffersons? Raise your hand. Okay, okay, you can work with me here then. Many of you know this show was back in the 70s, and the Jeffersons were about, the show was basically about um, a black entrepreneur that came out of poverty in a difficult situation in his youth, and he was able to establish a dry cleaning business. And his business became so successful that he was able to move out of his environment, and he was able to move up to the east side. Apparently the west side was the bad side and the east side was good. So he was able to move on over to the east side. And then it continues to say that 
throughout his, his, his story, he gets excited about the fact that he got so successful that he was able to move into what? A deluxe apartment in the sky. That's right. And as a young person, I was always curious, like, what is the big deal about living in an apartment in the sky? It didn't seem like it was all that much of a big deal. But in this show, one of the things that made him the most proud was that he had this apartment, and it was way up in the sky. And so I never really understood this. And then one day, my wife and I, we went to Las Vegas. And we stayed in a high-rise building. And when we got into the building, into the place, they told us, oh, your room is up on this 70th floor or something ridiculous like that. And as we came into the building, there were so many people on the street. We were just swarmed and mobbed. And it was hectic and busy and wild and crazy. And I was like, oh, my goodness. How do people live like this every single day? But when we got up to our room and I walked out, it was nighttime by that time, and I walked into the apartment and I looked out of the window and I looked at the view that you get from being that high up. And I saw how beautiful everything looked completely different from that vantage point. And I said to myself, as I looked down on those same streets that seemed so busy and chaotic and hectic and all that, everything seemed so calm and so peaceful. And at that moment, I began to understand the importance of having that bird's eye view and being at that point where you get to look down on situations. And I saw the value of living in a deluxe apartment in the sky. But as I did that, God started to reveal to me the importance of moving on up. Moving on up out of where you once were to a new place. So if you will, I need you to turn with me to Isaiah, the 40th chapter and the 31st verse. And we want to get into this scripture. <clears throat> and the scripture reads, But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. Let me read that again. Those who do what? Those who do what? Those who hope in the Lord. Not just hope in anything. People put their hope in a lot of different things, believing that those things are going to carry them through. But it's not until you start to learn to put your hope and your trust in the Lord will you renew your strength. It goes on to say, They will soar with wings of eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. And so when I read that second stanza where it says, they will soar on wings of eagles, it once again gives us an idea and gives us a picture of being able to fly high up above everything else. And as I started to read the scripture, God put it on my mind that this day we wants to talk about us moving on up. And he, and he said to me that someone here today is struggling and came here with a heavy heart because their situations and their circumstances have gotten so bad that they have begun to lose their hope in God. And because they have begun to lose their hope in God, they have also lost their strength. But God has told me today to encourage you to let you know that today he is here to restore your strength and your faith in him. And he wanted me to tell you that he wants you to, to think of it from a different way. He said, don't give up, but move on up. I want to say that one more time. He said, don't give up, but move on up. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. So what has happened to us is that the enemy is trying to distract us by putting all sorts of obstacles and things in our lives that are distracting us from where we really need to be. And what he wants us to do is to continue to look at those circumstances from a, from a natural perspective. And when we look from a natural perspective, these things seem overwhelming. They seem like they're things that we cannot over, overcome no matter how hard we try. 
No matter how many jobs we get, we still can't seem to make enough money to pay our bills. I don't know what it is, but there's something about when you're struggling with financial, with financial difficulties. It just affects every part of your life. But God is saying that we need to learn not to look from this same perspective down at the same level that the enemy wants to keep you at. See, the enemy wants to keep you fighting on the ground level. But somewhere in the word of God, I heard it said that we don't fight against flesh and blood, but we fight against principalities and rulers of darkness in high places. See, we're fighting our battles in the wrong atmosphere. God said, I need you to move on up a little higher to where I'm at. I want to give you some knowledge and some information that will allow you to get where the real battle is. And when you get up there and you start fighting at that new level and you look down at your problems, all of a sudden they don't seem so intimidating. God said, I need you to move on up. And so there are four different benefits that God was showing me about moving on up. The first one that he wanted us to understand is that problems don't look so big when you look, learn to rise above everything. And so what God was telling me and what he was showing me is that I remember one time when I was in an airport and I was in the Orlando airport and I was late for my plane. Something happened, we, 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 we ran out of gas on the way there and I had to go get gas because I didn't buy it up ahead. And so I didn't want to have to pay $50 a gallon. So I said, I'm going to go and, and, and get some gas, but I ended up being late. And so I was running through this airport and as I was running, I was like, my God, how big is this airport? It seemed like I was running for about a half an hour. And so I got to the thing and I was like, man, this thing is so big. But when I was in the airport, that thing seemed so huge. But as we got into the plane and we started to fly up into the air, I started looking down on that airplane, um, on that airport. And all of a sudden, that airport didn't look so big anymore. And what God was saying is as we start to become closer and draw closer to him, and we start relying on our own devices. And we learn to put our trust and our faith in him. Can I get an amen? That somehow, some way, he will start to show you that the things that we once thought were so intimidating are not as intimidating as they once were. He said, I need to change your perspective. I need you to look at these things from my eyes. And just like in an airplane, as we look down on the earth, all those things that seem so huge, like that building, seem so, so minute and so small. And even things that you might see that seem like they're monolithic, like a mountain. When you look at it from an airplane, not only does it look small, but at some point it becomes as though it doesn't even exist. And what God is saying is, once you grab hold to this concept, once you grab hold to this idea that those problems that you had will cease to exist the same way. Because I'm going to teach you how to look at them from my eyes. God is going to change our mindset. God is going to change our perspective. And the beautiful thing about it is that as you're looking, sometimes when we're looking up at an obstacle, like you look at these stairs and you're looking at them and say you think that they're so difficult to climb, they seem hard. But God is saying that they're hard because you're trying to do it on your own. They're trying to handle it on your own. Come here, Brother Chima, come here for, for a second. He's like, look at him fixing his clothes. Come on up here, boy. <laughs> Stand right here. 
See, what happens is when you're standing right here and you're facing your circumstances all by yourself and you're trying to climb these stairs, it seems impossible. But God is saying that's because you're doing it yourself. See, what God is saying is I'm up here and you're down here. And I'm telling you, son, I need you to come up here. And not only does he tell you, but all he needs you to do is not a lot. I need to just show a little bit of faith. Just a little bit of faith. The faith the size of a mustard seed. That's all I need from you. I can do work with that. So all I need you to do is stretch out your hand to me. Stretch out your hand. And I will drag you on up. No, you don't have to do the work. I'll do it. Just give me your hand and trust that I will do it. He said, I want to bring you to new levels that you didn't know exist. But I need you to trust in me. I need you to trust in me. So I need you to come on up a little bit higher. And those things, those things, I know we're from at the ground level when you're looking at your children, you're thinking of them and saying, there's no way they're going to get it right. They're, they're involved in all kinds of mess. I, you look at them and you say, they don't seem to have the education. They don't seem to have a job. They don't seem to have an idea or a clue. But God said, that's all right. I'm taking care of it. If you see it from my perspective, you'll see it a little different. So he said, I need you to move on up. Move on up. Move on up. Move on up. So I need you to rise up above the circumstances. So that's the first one. Problems start to look a little different. The second thing is that when you get, uh, when you get to a certain level, you can see things coming from afar off. So in battle, what happens is when you're fighting in a battle, you sometimes get into a position where you get on the higher ground. And from a tactical perspective, that gives you an advantage. And why do you have an advantage? Because when you are up above and you're looking at your enemy, when they try to come at you from all the different angles, you can see them coming from afar off. And from that perspective, not only can you see them, but you have a better angle to be on the offensive. And what God is saying is that I need you to come up to the another level so that you can start to see the attacks of the enemy. For too long, not only were we on his level, but he was the one that had the higher ground on us. And he was looking down at us and shooting us like fish in a barrel. But God is saying to us, I want to put you in that position when you move on up, when the enemy can no longer ambush you any longer. He said, I'm going to move you to a place that when you see the enemy, you will see him coming from a way off and you can get on the offensive now. And instead of him attacking you, you can see him coming. You said, no, 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 devil. I see what you're trying to do in my life. And at that time, God is going to give you the victory before you even fire a shot. He said, I need you to move up to this level, though. And how do you do that? By trusting in him. Trusting and believing in him. You see, when you're in that position, the enemy is constantly, constantly trying to come against us. He never, never stops. He never stops. All that changes is us, our mindset, how we deal with the situation, how we learn to trust in him, how we learn to put our faith in him. See, God wants to change the circumstance. We're not going to be the ones sitting down there in, as fish in a barrel trapped. We are going to be the aggressor. We are going to be the victorious ones. And he said, I'm going to change you from being a victim to being a victor. Amen, 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 amen. The other thing that happens in a battle when you have the higher ground, is sometimes when you're in a battle, you have tactical support. And what that means is when you're on the ground or you're in the, in the battle, you still may not be able to see everything that's coming. But when you have tactical support, you have, they, they position a satellite 
Or they position a helicopter in that general area. And what they do is they, they gather information and they send it back to you so that you can make informed decisions. And what God is saying he wants to do is he wants to be your tactical support. He wants you to learn to ask him for every bit of advice that you need. When you want to go left and you feel somebody saying, no, 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 my son, you can't go left. There's a problem there. That's your tactical support telling you, no, there is a problem. I don't know about you, but I heard about a sister that was in a car and the God said, I don't want you to take that route home. I need you to take another route home. That was her tactical support. That's God speaking to us, saying to us, my son, my daughter, I see what's ahead and I want to warn you what's to come. I need you to know that I'm watching you. I am ordering your footsteps. I'm ordering your footsteps. And so that you don't have to suffer to fall or to fail because God is giving you the instructions that you need to be successful in your life. We have a tactical support. We have a tactical support in God. And the third one is, when you move on up, the advantage you get is you get a chance to see the bigger picture. You get a chance to see the bigger picture. I, won't, I remember one time I went with my family and we went to a corn maze. Anybody ever been to a corn maze? A corn maze is a My mother was like, yeah, I've been in the corn maze. We went in the summertime to this corn maze, and what it is is basically the, they pile these stalks of corn up into a maze. And now these stalks of corn have to be like 15 feet or so. And the thing is, they give you a map, you look at it first, and then you go into the maze. When you get into the maze, all of a sudden, everything is so high that you can't see the environment or even what the maze looks like anymore. So you don't even know where to go, what to do. All you could do is try to go from your memory of what you thought the maze looked like. And all I know is we separated the men from the girls and we went in at separate times. And we got into there and, and at one point and all of a sudden we started fighting. <laughs> some of us are saying go left, some of us are going right, and we're like, I don't know where we're going. We stop bickering and quarreling and fighting, and I'm like, we're never going to get out of here. And it's the middle of the su uh, summer, and it's hot, and the sun's beaming down on us. I felt I was in an episode of Survivor. And all of a sudden, I'm like, we lost our complete perspective on where we were. And what happens is when we're in a situation and we don't have the correct perspective, it is so easy for us to get lost and so easy for us to lose who we are. And even sometimes we will begin to turn on each other and start to fight with one another, just like we did in that maze. And the same thing happens in this life that we live. Sometimes some things come upon us and we start to get so frustrated that instead of fighting the enemy, we turn around and start fighting each other. In the war, we call this friendly fire. There's been plenty of casualties right here in the church from some friendly fire, all because we lose our perspective. God says, I need us to move on up a little bit, a little bit higher. And so what happened is in this maze, in the middle of the maze, what they had is they had this platform that you can walk on up and you can look down on the maze because it was high, high up. And you could see where the exit was. And so in our mind, I began to say, okay, all we need to do, all we need to do is if we could just get to that middle of the maze. If we could get to the higher platform, we can see our way out. And God is letting us all know that no matter what the circumstances look like in your life, if you could just get to that higher platform, if you could get to that higher place in your life, if you could get to where he is trying to leave you, he will show you the way out of your situation. And so what God was also revealing to me is in a battle, what happens is you have something called the bigger picture. 
And in the military, when you are on the ground level, you don't always know what the bigger picture is. All they say to you is go and fight the enemy. But there are some people within the ranks that as you start to move up a little higher and a little bit higher in the ranks, all of a sudden you get privileged to what they call need to know information. And when you get high enough, you know the entire game plan and the entire strategy that is being deployed in there. But what is happening right now is many of us are caught up fighting in the low levels. But God said, once again, I need you to move on up because I need to reveal to you the master plan. I need to reveal to you my entire plan for what is going on in your life. Yes, like I said, your children may not seem as though they're being successful. No, your marriage may not look as though it's going to survive. But that's only because you don't know my master plan. You don't know what I'm trying to lead you to. And if you understood and you understood and you knew my master plan, you wouldn't be, you wouldn't be dragging around sorrowful and you wouldn't look so pitiful because you'd understand that in the end, you win. You win. If you can get in the room where the decisions are being made, but that requires trust. How do you get to that room? You begin to trust him. When your faith goes from one place to the next place to the next place to the next place, all of a sudden you have the type of faith that nothing can shake you. But you got to get to that next level, the next level. And the last one, the last benefit of grow, moving on up, it's called growing out of the old. Growing out of the old. I need us to go to Matthew, the 13th chapter and the 24th verse. Matthew, the 14th chapter and the 24th verse. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. And it says... Jesus told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while everyone was sleeping, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. When the wheat sprout, sprouted and formed heads, the weeds also appeared. The owner's servants came to him and said, Sir, did you, did you sow good seed in, in your field? Where then did the weeds come from? And the enemy, and, and enemy did this, he replied. The servants asked him, do you want us to go and pull them up? No, he answered, because while you are pulling the weeds, you will uproot the wheat with them. Let them grow together until the harvest. And at, the, and at that time, I will tell the harvesters, first collect all the weeds and tie them together in bundles and then burn so that they can be burned. Then gather the wheat and bring them to the barn. And what God is showing to us or revealing to us in the scripture is that once again, he wants us to move up into another level. You see, what is happening in our lives is too many times we are staying in the same position as the rest of the wheat. And God is telling us that I need you to separate yourself some, from, some, from people. And I need you to separate yourself from some of the things that you've been doing. He's saying, I can't keep you where you were. You see, in the beginning, everything looks the same. You don't know the difference between the wheat and you don't know the difference between the weeds. And as you start to grow up, even for a little while, they still look the same. You've been hanging around with some people for a long time in your life, and you think that they're on your side. But God is telling me to tell you that those people that you think are on your side may not really be on your side. They're imposters. That's the wheat looking, the, the weeds looking like the wheat. And what God is saying is that as you start to grow up and try and get to that next level, he will start to reveal to you those that are the wheat and those that are the weed. 
and those situations and those things that you used to hang around and do where you thought it was okay, God is going to say, no, that you hanging around in the weeds. And God is saying, I need to draw you out of that. I need to draw you out. He's saying, I need you to grow up so that I could see the difference between you and them. He said, I can't have you staying at that same level. It's time to level up so that people can see the difference between what wheat looks like and what weeds look like. See, I can't gather up the wrong if the right looks like that. Somewhere along the way, there has to be a difference. There has to be a difference between the way you live your life and the way they live their life, the way you choose to look, the way they seem to look. Somebody in here should know what I'm talking about. I know somebody has had some circumstances where they've been hanging around with people that you thought were going in the same direction. And then you turned around and you looked at your life and you said, I had enough. I can't do this any longer. And God is saying, I need you to go in a different direction. I need you to move on up just a little bit higher just a little bit higher and what will happen is I will separate you from those things once and for all when you tried to get out of it on your own you couldn't do it you tried and you tried and you failed and you failed but now God is saying the time has come that if you have faith in me I am gonna move you to a level where you are distinct from all those things time to level up can you say move on up 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 yeah, hallelujah and he said I want you to have wings of an eagle wings of an eagle God said the problem with us is we've been hanging around with a bunch of chickens God said you've been hanging around with a bunch of chickens have you ever seen an eagle hanging around with chickens? Don't you think that would look weird? What do you think you look like? People are looking at you saying, you don't fit in. You heard it almost all your life. You don't fit in, what are you doing? That's because you're not a chicken, you're an eagle. You see, the thing about a chicken is that it does have wings. A chicken does have feathers. It does have a beak. And you know what about a chicken? It can also fly just a little bit. Just a little bit. And for a moment, you might get deceived in thinking that that thing can fly. But it can only really glide for but so long before the nature of what that chicken really is comes to the front. And all of a sudden, he starts flapping his wings and instead of going up, he starts going down. But let me tell you something, an eagle is a whole nother thing. Woo! An eagle is a whole nother thing. I'm telling you something! If you only knew, if you only knew, when you're an eagle, when you're an eagle, the Bible says that you and you in your mother's womb, I knew you. Don't you know that a eagle was born to fly? Nobody has to teach it how to fly. Just one day when the time is right, they get pushed out of their nest and they just start flying on their own. An eagle is altogether different. A, a chicken has to flap, 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 do all this work just to get a little bit of progress. But don't you know, an eagle, all it does is one flap and it flies and flies and flies and flies and flies and then it gives another flap and it soars 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 and it soars. And then all of a sudden, he gets to a level where he sees things from a whole nother perspective. Why? Because they get granted eyes and vision to see things that no other bird can see. Yes, I'm telling you, you are an eagle, but you've been hanging around with some chickens. Hallelujah. God said it's time to realize who you are and your full potential. 
God said it's time to move on up. Move on up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise his name. Praise his name. So if you ever get tired of flapping your wings and not getting anywhere, God's saying then that means it's time for you to move on up and start recognizing who you are and what you are. Take your birthright back. Take your birthright back. Take your birthright back. Stop sputtering and stammering over these little things that should be tripping up little kids. You don't have to go over a hurdle. You got to fly on over it. You trying to jump over something you're supposed to be flying over. Come on, change your perspective. Change your perspective. Move on up. Move on up. So today, God is challenging us to take our faith to the next level. Take our belief to another level. Take our trust in him to another level. And move on up. Move on up. Some of you have been battling in your mind to the point where you feel that you're losing your mind, your grip on reality. And God is saying, I need you to put your faith and trust in me. Not in man. Not in even your own eyes. Because your eyes will deceive you. Put your trust in the only thing the only thing that matters, put your trust in me and move on up. So in conclusion, to stick with my, my TV show theme, I want to say this. If you ever wonder why we're so happy and what's happening, I'm so glad that when I was in sin, I was saved by the bell. Because the enemy wouldn't give me a break. But now we can have some happy days and some good times. Knowing that we won't always live in a little house on the prairie. But one day, we will be in a mansion in the big blue sky. In a big valley. And all we have to do is get smart and cry, oh my God, I want to be forgiven and trust through our family ties and our modern family and friends that we can be a community and not be the underdog or be lost because you come from a dynasty that is full of fame and that's incredible. And no matter what happens, always remember that our Heavenly Father knows best and now it is time for us to move on up. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So I have a question for you, NEP Ministries. Are you glad to be in the house of the Lord? I said, are you glad to be in the house of the Lord? One more time, are you glad to be in the house of the Lord? Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let us all stand. Hallelujah. Let us all stand. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you as humbly as we could possibly know how, Lord God, Jesus. And we are asking, Lord, and praying, Lord God, that you will teach us how to move on up, Lord God, Jesus. From the very youngest to the oldest of us, Lord God, we can all afford to move on up just a little bit higher, Lord God. Oh God, we pray today that you will help us to put aside our, our pride, Lord God, to put our egos aside, Lord God, and say to you, Father, please teach us to move on up just a little bit higher, Lord God, so that we can trust and believe in you.